Assalamu alaikum and welcome to a new series about purification of the soul. In this series, we'll be reflecting on matters concerning the ruh or the soul, purification of the soul. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created man in three different components. The first and most noble of these is the ruh or the soul. And this is a spirit from the matters of the unseen, the ghayb, in which none has the knowledge of its reality of except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah tells us this in the Qur'an. He says, they ask you about the ruh. Say, the ruh is from the command of my Lord, and you have not been given knowledge of it uh, except a little. And the second component is that of aql, or intellect and rationale. And it is by this that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala distinguished man from all other creatures. The aql, the intellect, the rationale. And the third a uh, component of man is his body or badan. So in total these three components, the intellect, the ruh, the spirit, and the body of a person, when they are joined together, they create a creature called insan. They form, to, uh, form a creature called insan or man. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has also connected the three components of the deen or the religion of Islam with these three components of a human being. Let's turn to our guests. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Um, how can we? What are the different components of the Deen of Islam? Uh, the components of the Deen is Islam, Ihsan, and Iman. Exactly, Islam, Iman, and Ihsan. These are the three components of the Deen. And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala made Iman, or the inward belief system, for the benefit of the intellect. Islam, the outer actions for the benefit of the body, and ihsan, or purification of the soul and perfection, for the benefit of the soul. And this can be seen very clearly in the hadith of Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam, which was related by Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. So Umar radiallahu anhu, he says that one day we were sitting, while we were sitting with the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, there appeared before us a man whose clothes were exceedingly white, whose hair was exceedingly black, and there were no signs of journey on him, but none of us knew him. Okay, let's just take, uh, take, take a, a side point from here. Why did Umar anhu mention these four characteristics here? Could it be to emphasize the fact that the person who came was not a resident in the town? And so he said there was, that none of us knew him, yeah? Yeah, and he was not a resident in the town, therefore emphasizing that that he's not known to the people. He's not known to the people, and? And also, because his clothes were exceedingly white, and his hair was, you know, exceedingly, exceedingly black. black. So and he could not be a traveller. He can't have been a traveller. Yeah. So on the one hand, he's a traveller, because nobody knows him, he must be a traveller, because in those days everybody knew each other in the city, but yet on the other hand, this conflicts. He has no signs of travelling. He has no signs of travelling on him. His hair is exceedingly black, his clothes are exceedingly white. None of us knew him, but yet there were no signs of journey on him. So Umar continues, radiallahu anhu, he said that he walked up and sat down in front of the Prophet wasallam. He put his knees against his knees, and the palms of his hands on the thighs, or on his thighs. And he said, O Muhammad wasallam, tell me about Islam. أَخْبِرْنِي عَنِ الْإِسْلَامِ So the Prophet ﷺ said, Islam is to testify that there is none who has the right to be worshipped but Allah, and that Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah. To testify, to, with, which is with the tongue. To testify that none has the right to be worshipped but Allah, and that Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah. To perform the prayers, to do the salah, to establish the prayers, to give the zakah, to fast the month of Ramadan, and to give a pilgrimage or to make pilgrimage to the house if one is able to do so. So, the Prophet ﷺ replied, Sadaqt, you have spoken correctly. Now we were amazed, Omar says. We were amazed at him, that on the one hand he's asking the question, and then he's correcting him. He's saying, yes, you're speaking right. You're speaking correctly. So the man said, tell me about Iman. The Prophet ﷺ went on to say that Iman is to believe in Allah his angels, his books, his messengers on the last day, and to believe in qadr or divine destiny, both the good and the evil thereof. He said you have spoken correctly. Okay, so now we can notice something. There is a common 
thing with all the uh, there's a common uh, denominator between all the things that constitute Islam and there's a common denominator between all those things which are iman what is that the things related to Islam Islam are the outer, yes. outer actions. they're all outer actions outer act. okay although the shahad of course all of them they have they are connected to certain inward actions but the essence of them are all outer actions the testimony on the tongue okay no one can be muslim but without that the prayer the zakah the fasting uh, and the hajj. So these are outer things. What about iman? It's an inner beliefs. Inner beliefs. So we can see, believe in Allah, His angels, His books, His messengers, qadr, predestiny, the good, the bad on thereof, and the last day. So uh, this is Islam and iman. Then the person asked about ihsan. Akhbirni anil ihsan. Tell me about ihsan. The Prophet ﷺ replied, he said it is to worship Allah as if you see Him. أن تعبد الله كأنك ترى فإن لم تكن ترى فإنه يراك. That you worship Allah as though you see Him, and if you don't see Him, then knowing that He truly sees you. He then went on to ask other questions, such as, "Tell me about the hour." The Prophet ﷺ replied, "The one questioned about it knows no better than the questioner." What's he asking about here? He's asking about the hour. What about the hour? That the knowledge of it is only with Allah. The knowledge of what about the uh, hour? The time. The time of the hour. What's the hour? What's the hour? Yawm al Qiyamah. Yawm al So here Jibreel is coming, he's asking, tell me about the hour. In other words, and the Prophet ﷺ knew what he meant, when will the day of judgment be? What did the Prophet ﷺ said? The one questioned about it, who's the one questioned? The Prophet, the Prophet ﷺ. ﷺ. Knows no more than the one who is questioning. Who's that? Jibreel. Jibreel. So, and this is teaching a very important principle. Nobody knows when the Day of Judgment is. Not even the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, then tell me about its signs. He said that the slave girl will give, give birth to her mistress, and that you will see barefoot, naked, destitute shepherds, competing in constructing lofty buildings. Then the man left, and I stayed for a short time. Umar radiallahu anhu says this. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Ya Umar, atadri man is sa'id? O oh, Umar, do you know who the questioner was? قُلْتُ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَعْلَمْ Allah, I said, Allah and His Messenger know best. He said, that was Jibreel who came to teach you your deen, your religion. So from this, what can we see? We can see that Islam, or the deen, the religion, has three components. What are they? Islam, Iman, Ihsan. Islam, Iman and Ihsan. Islam, as we can see, is linked here with the outer actions. Iman with the inner beliefs, and Ihsan with perfecting. Worshipping Allah as if you see Him. And if you don't see Him, then you worship Allah, uh, knowing that He truly sees you. And as a side point, if Islam and Iman are mentioned individually, then each encompasses the meaning of the other. This is because one can't have Iman without Islam, and neither can you have Islam without Iman. So you mentioned just the word Islam by itself, then it also encompasses the belief system. You mentioned the word Iman by itself, then it also encompasses the outer actions. But when mentioned together, such as in this hadith of Jibreel, then Islam is manifest on the outer actions, while Iman is manifest by one's belief. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He made Iman or the inward belief system for the benefit of the intellect. He made Islam... The outer actions for the benefit of the body and he made ihsan, purification and perfection for the benefit of the soul. Now, if somebody goes to the hospital, if somebody gets ill, where does he go? Hospital. hospital. He knows exactly which number to dial. In some countries it's 999, in some countries it's 112. Instructions. Everybody knows if there is a defect, a major defect with the body, Somebody breaks his arm. Somebody gets run over by a car. Uh, somebody has an as- asthma attack. Everybody knows what to do. You take the person to the hospital or you call a doctor. This is to do with the body. And we said that insan is made of three components. Body, soul and intellect. Why is it that we know exactly what to do when we have diseases of our body and pains in the body if you like, but we don't know what to do when we have diseases of the heart and soul. And this is a big problem among the ummah.